Lately, I've been starting gardens in Davidson County in an effort to promote local organic and biodynamic farming. Besides the big gardens that I've started at Bells Bend and Glen Levin, I've decided to try my hand at backyard gardening. The first thing we did here was we double dug these beds. That's where we go way deep down so the roots can penetrate deep into the soil. When your roots can penetrate that deeply, then your crop will do so much better. After double digging, I put three buckets of compost on the soil. The soil is beautiful. It's friable, it's got good texture, and it's got that dark color that implies fertility. We did have to pull out a lot of roots from nearby trees. Then, when we were ready to plant, we simply raked over the surface and started planting. This is a spring garden with peas and carrots. They're companion plants they love to grow next to each other. And once the peas are harvested, there will already be a bed of carrots. The variety here is sugar snap pea, and it's a beautiful, crunchy, sweet pea. They eat the pod and all. Over here, we have snow pea. The variety is Oregon sugar pod. And it's also eaten the pod and all. The peas don't swell up as much as they do in the sugar snaps. The carrots will mature towards the end of June and the beginning of July. And once they're harvested, we'll have time for a crop of green beans, cucumbers, and summer squash, like zucchinis or yellow crookneck. Peas can get four feet tall, so we put a trellis up and kind of leaned it back a little bit in order to let a little more light in for the carrots underneath. This early spring garden has a row of lettuce, a couple rows of beets, a row of radish, and a row of Swiss chard. The lettuce is ready to harvest. We're going to pull it up from the roots and shake off as much soil as we can to leave into the garden bed. And then we'll cut the tops off and we'll save the tops for a salad. And then we'll put the roots and the garden refuse back into the compost pile. The radishes are also ready to pull up now. They've been in here a while. And radishes and lettuce, they're quick growing crops. So we'll get them out of here, which will leave more room for the Swiss chard and the beets. So we're loosening the ground up where we had our lettuce plants in order to plant a crop of tomatoes. The tomatoes will grow slowly at first and won't interfere with these beets, which will be harvested by the time the tomatoes get big. This is a way of using successive planting in the garden so that we get the most out of every square foot. So I'm just gonna dig a little hole right here. Put a little compost in and mix it in. Water it real good. These are bare root plants I grew in my coal frame back at the farm. Into the mud, I'll put those roots, making sure there's moist, soil all around them. Keep those, those roots moist and then I just bury the stem a little bit because a tomato will root along a stem unlike many other plants. We keep that dry soil on top, we'll keep the moisture in and prevent the soil from caking over. The tomatoes need quite a bit of space so what we'll do here is we'll, we'll utilize this, this area right where the grass is so that we can trellis them over this way, sort of like we did the peas. There's a wooden frame around our garden bed here so that the grass and clover don't climb in. You'll notice there's a fence around the perimeter of the lawn and that will help keep critters out of the garden here. Now besides the spring vegetables and the summer vegetables, we'll keep planting every time something comes out of here Something else will go in, and even into the fall, we'll have kale and turnips and all kinds of stuff that we can overwinter. The small backyard garden can be extremely productive. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, 
visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.